In our first lesson on cubic polynomials, we are going to have a look at the remainder and factor theorems. The standard form of a cubic polynomial is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. In the next few lessons, we are going to have a look at how we can factorize a cubic polynomial so that we can then solve a cubic equation. And then we'll use this knowledge in the sketching of cubic functions. We are going to start off by having a look at what we already know about factors and division. If we consider the normal number 24, we can definitely say that 8 is a factor of 24. The reason for this, we can rewrite 24 as 8 times 3, or we can say that 24 divided by 8 is exactly 3. But if we go and have a look at a value like 7, we will say that it is not a factor of 24. Because 24 can only be rewritten as 7 times 3 plus another 3. Because 7 times 3 is 21 and then we still need to add 3 to get to 24. And if we were to divide 24 by 7, we would get an irrational answer. A factor is then a value that the dividend can be divided by perfectly without a remainder. Just like we can use long division to say that 53 divided by 3 will give us an answer of 17 with a remainder of 2, we can also use long division when dividing algebraic expressions. So here we can say that x squared plus 6x plus 9 divided by x plus 2 will give us an answer of x plus 4 with a remainder of 1. This very long procedure can however be substituted with two theorems to make your calculations much more effective. The first of these two theorems is the remainder theorem and it sounds like this. When a polynomial fx is divided by ax plus b, the remainder is given by f of minus b over a. This still sounds intricate, but if we have a look at an example, you will see that it's much simpler. Example 1. Determine the remainder when fx is divided by x plus 1. So this theorem says that we need to take our divisor and substitute into the function to get the remainder. I'm going to break this up into a few steps. Our first step is to take our divisor, putting it equal to 0 and solving x. So our divisor in this case is x plus 1, which I'm going to put equal to 0 and then solve x as minus 1. My next step is to then substitute this into my polynomial or my function. So I take my function and I substitute x with minus 1. So here I will take every x and change it to minus 1. And the final step is to simplify. And here, when I simplify, I will get 13. So the remainder theorem says that the remainder will be equal to 13 if I divide the function by x plus 1. Example 2. Determine the remainder when fx is divided by 2x minus 1. So we follow our same three steps. So we start by taking our divider, putting it equal to 0, and then solving x. So here x will be a half. Our second step is to then substitute into our function. So we are going to substitute x with a half. Our third step is to simplify and here we will get minus 6. And therefore we can say that if this function is divided by 2x minus 1, the remainder will be minus 6. And because we are working with variables, a remainder can equal a negative value. In both our examples, we had a value as a remainder. We, however, know that if there is no remainder, this divisor is also a factor of the function. And this is what the factor theorem says. The factor theorem. If f of minus b over a equals 0, then the remainder is 0 and ax plus b is a factor of the function. So once again, this says that if we calculate the remainder, 
and it works out to be 0, then that divisor is a factor of the function. Example 3. Prove that x minus 2 is a factor of the function. Here we start off with the same steps for calculating the remainder. So we take our divisor, x minus 2, and put it equal to 0, and solve x as 2. Next, we substitute this value into our function. So we are going to determine f of 2. And here, when we simplify, we'll get an answer of 0. So this means that the remainder will be equal to 0 if we divide this function by x minus 2. And that implies that x minus 2 is a factor of the function. In our next lesson, we will have a look at how we're going to factorize this polynomial completely now that we already know one of the factors.